Hold on to your butts, it's time to talk about Kong Skull Island, directed by Jordan Vogt Roberts and starring Tom Hiddleston, John Goodman, Brie Larson, and Samuel L. Motherfucking Jackson. Back in 1973, right at the end of the Vietnam War, a group of scientists, a tracker, and a photographer have convinced the U.S. government to fund a little expedition to the mysterious Skull Island, an as yet uncharted island in the Pacific. And they even managed to get a military escort out of it because the war just ended and I guess they have nothing better to do. And they're hoping to map out the island and learn as much as they can about this untouched by man ecosystem. Part of this mapping process involves dropping seismic charges onto the island, as one of these scientists has a theory that the island is hollow, and dropping the charges will help them map it out. And his theory proves correct, but the explosions also draw out this huge friggin' ape known as Kong. And he is not too happy about these humans coming along and blowing up his homeland. Lots of people die, and the survivors of Kong's Wrath have about three days to make it to the extraction point, or else they will be stuck on this island potentially for a very long time. And they have to get to that point alive, which is easier said than done when pretty much everything on this island wants to kill you. So this movie is just a little bit silly, which really should go without saying that that's kind of what you expect from a King Kong movie, right? I mean, this island, Skull Island, was supposedly undiscovered for so long until it was finally photographed by a satellite because it is surrounded by a perpetual hurricane. Which I'm pretty sure does not happen unless a wizard is involved. And of course, it's loaded with giant spiders, giant lizards, giant buffalo, giant insect tree things. If you saw the movie, you you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know what the hell you would call that thing, but yeah. And of course, the huge 100 foot tall friggin' ape. It's all a bit silly, but it is damn good fun. It was an interesting choice to make this a period piece instead of setting it in the present day, and the Vietnam War era setting actually works pretty well for this movie, and gives us a really nice soundtrack to boot. The various monsters look fantastic, that giant spider is fucking creepy. Ugh. The action sequences are very well put together and a ton of fun, whether it's King Kong against the humans, the humans against monsters, King Kong against monsters, it's fantastic. As you might imagine, this movie is very special effects heavy. It's a total CGI fest, but thankfully it is CGI done right. Kong looks amazing. Props to ILM and also to Terry Notary for the great mocap work. And I suppose this is technically a spoiler, but Kong is not the real villain of the movie. But you already knew that, right? Much like Godzilla in his most recent film, he's actually protecting mankind from a much bigger threat, and we would all be just fine if we would just leave him the fuck alone and let him do his thing. When are we ever gonna learn? The real villains are the characters played by John Goodman and Samuel L. motherfucking Jackson, and they are every bit as great as you would expect. And while we eventually come to realize that they are clearly in the wrong, they are still very sympathetic and their actions make a lot of sense given what these characters have been through. They're not necessarily evil, just horribly misguided. Also, I really like that Jackson was able to sneak in a Jurassic Park reference. That was awesome. Honestly, I think I ended up enjoying the villains a lot more than the good guys, except for Kong, because really, they're kind of boring by comparison. They all got in their moments of badassery here and there, and the actors are doing a fine job given what they have to work with. They just don't always have that much to work with. Hiddleston is playing a former SAS guy, and he's that type of character that everyone really should listen to, but of course they don't because humans is stupid. Brie Larson is a photographer, and that's about it. Corey Hawkins is a geologist, and that's about it. And Jing Tian, oh God. After I saw her in The Great Wall, I was so looking forward to seeing more of her in Kong, and God, they gave her nothing to work with at all. I don't even think her character has an introduction. She just kind of appears, and she's working alongside John Goodman and Corey Hawkins, and apparently she's a biologist, but I only know that because I read it on Wikipedia. I don't even know if they mentioned that in the movie. If they did, it was brief. And I think she's supposed to be romantically involved with Corey Hawkins' character, but they only kind of hint at it. It kind of seemed like they were hinting at the two of them being married, but 
I freely admit I'm guessing here because the movie's certainly not gonna tell you. The only hero I really enjoyed was John C. Riley, who plays a soldier who was stranded on the island way back during World War II and has somehow survived there the last 30 years. And he's clearly very intelligent and knowledgeable about Skull Island, but he's also been away from civilization for 30 years, so he's a little bit cuckoo. He was fun. This movie has a really strong cast. It's just a shame that some of these characters were not good enough to match the talent involved. And I have one more complaint here, and I freely admit I'm nitpicking, but this is a PG-13 movie, which is fine. That's perfectly fine. But PG-13 means you're allowed one F-bomb. And Jackson doesn't get it. You have the best F-bomb dropper in the business, and you don't let him drop the F-bomb. In fact, he has a moment where he tries to drop the F-bomb and gets cut off. What the fuck? So despite some shortcomings with the characters and an admittedly silly story, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it very much. If you're a fan of big monster movies and you want to see a giant ape wielding a tree like it's a baseball bat, you'll want to check this one out. I would say it's worth paying full price, and I don't know if the 3D is really necessary, but if you really want to, go for it. And if this is the direction in which they're taking King Kong, I am definitely looking forward to what they come up with next. Especially since, according to the post credit scene, this may not be the only time we see Kong fighting a giant lizard. Oh yeah, they're going there. And that's about all I have to say about Kong Skull Island. So until next time, take care.